Oh, hi guys, it's Howard again. The year was 1969. The place, Cannon's Boardroom. The general discussion was about how well sales of their various SLR cameras were going. The F-Series was a winner, the FT-Series were selling well, and the TL-Series were also a success. These cameras all took FL lenses, and things were good. Amongst all the backslapping and celebrations, and perhaps a few too many drinks, someone must have said, here's an idea, let's make a really weird F-Series SLR camera with limited speeds, a partial fixed lens, and an aperture control around the rewind knob. And somehow the rest of the directors agreed. Thus the Canon EXEE was born, also sold in the US as the Bell & Howell Auto 35 Reflex. It was designed to be a budget camera with several auxiliary lenses available. It came with a 50mm f1.8 as standard, but you could also purchase a 35mm, a 95mm and a 125mm, all f3.5 lenses. Like the Zeiss Contaflex Super B that I covered in the last review, it has a lens portion fixed to the body, comprising three elements and a screw thread to accept the remaining front lens sections. Perhaps the Contaflex was where they actually got their inspiration. There was an awkward metering issue which they fixed in the EX Auto in 1972 and then the EX Auto ceased manufacture approximately two years later and that was the end of the experiment. Despite all the strangeness, with either the 35mm or the 50mm lens screwed in place, it's a great little camera. OK, let's have a good look at it. We look at the front, we've got the proudly proclaim it as an EXEE Canon. We've got the self timer on the left, very reliable, good for about 10 seconds, and a little QL badge, which I'll explain in a minute. Now, the lens that's in this at the moment is the 50mm f1.8, but that's removed by simply unscrewing this front section and then. You've got the uh, rear uh, elements, three elements, fitted to the camera permanently. Uh, so any of the four lenses, including this one, will simply screw in to here. So let's screw this back in. I don't have any of the others. I've only got it. When I bought this, it only came with the 50mm, and I'm quite happy with that. Now, you'll see there's a little white dot on the front here. If you fit one of the other lenses, You've got to make sure you've got your infinity on the little orange line, so you're all the way to the right. You then screw in the new lens in place of this one, and each lens has a focusing range on it. So once you've screwed it in, you then rotate the focusing lens until the white dot lines up with the infinity on that one. So that's and that's got its own distance scale. All a bit weird. OK, let's have a look at the top. This is where things really get a bit odd. So we've got a standard rewind knob, nothing unusual about that. But then below, underneath that, we've got this rotating disc. And we've got an off position. We've got an EE position. So that automatically selects the aperture, depending on the speed you've got selected over here and the lighting conditions. So that's, you select your speed and it'll select the aperture for you fully automatically. But if we go the other way, we've got this strange black segment. It says 1.8 there and F16 there. So it's obviously a manual control of the apertures. But of course, if you had to rely on that, you'd be guessing. But you don't have to rely on that because inside the viewfinder, when you're not on EE and you're in this segment, Wherever you turn this, the needle in the uh, window will point to the aperture. So uh, there's, it's, it works beautifully, actually. So wherever you put this, it, the needle simply points to the aperture in the uh, in the eyepiece, and it works extremely well. Uh, we've got a, a standard cold accessory shoe. So if you're going to use a flash, you're going to need a lead, and you've got the little flash sink port around here to fit the lead to from the flash so that's pretty standard now we come to the I'll just get that out of the road a bit we come to the speed selectors now 
as I say, it's, it's limited. It only goes from an eighth of a second around to a five hundredth. So that's the entire range, which is a bit less than most. There's no quarter or a half or a second or anything like that. Now, the little awkward aspect of this is because this lens is a 1.8 and the other lens are all f3.5, you have to adjust that accordingly in this little window here. So, for instance, I usually use pan f, which is 50 ASA. This lens is f1.8, so I've got it set on the 1.8 setting. But if I switched lenses, I'd have to bring the ASA around and line it up with the f3.5 setting. So that was, that was very awkward, and it meant that people switching lenses who had you know, more than one was very easy to forget this aspect, and of course then you'd be two stops out. The, uh, when they brought out the EX Auto in 19... Uh, uh, when was it? 1972 it was, yes, a couple of years after this, they solved this problem. Now, I've never handled one. I don't know exactly how they did it, but you didn't have to worry about this anymore. It, it automatically compensated for it. We've got the a standard uh, shutter button that, that accepts a cable release. Over here, we've got the uh, frame counter uh, that works well, and it automatically zeroes out as you uh, open, when you open the back of the camera. Got a couple of strap lugs here for obviously for a strap. Uh, if we look underneath, uh, we've got standard uh, rewind, you know, to rewind the film, push that in, rewind. We've got a, a nice centrally mounted tripod mount and the battery cover. Now, like most cameras of this era, uh, they took the 1.3 volt mercury battery which are unavailable. Uh, but you can use a, a wine cell, W-E-I-N cell, and that's the uh, correct voltage, or you can get a little adapter that basically fits in here and then takes a slightly smaller battery of 1.5 volts and cuts it down to 1.3 volts. So then you'll get accurate meter readings and everything. Now, if the meter doesn't work, that doesn't matter because you can use this camera purely manually. You've got control manually over your aperture, you've got control manually over your speed, so even without a battery or a meter, you can uh, successfully take photos with this as long as you can, you've got a, a, an external light meter or the Sunny 16 rule or, or something. Okay. Now, a couple of things. The viewfinder itself, it's rather unusual. Uh, you've got a focusing Fresnel screen in the centre, but the rest of the screen doesn't focus, but it's very bright. And uh, focusing, is, it, it, works, it focuses beautifully, but it is, it is quite unusual in that respect. You've got the little uh, rails here to fit diopter adjustments if you're a glass wearer and you like getting uh, diopter adjustment lenses to fit over the viewfinder. And there's... One other nice little aspect of this camera, the QL. I'll just pop the back. Come on, pop. Okay, there we got it. And the QL stands for the Canon Patented Quick Load Film System. So it's got this little mechanism here that works beautifully. So when you put the film in, you push this up, bring the film across, bring the, the leader up to the orange line, or red or orange, whatever you like to call it, pop that down that far, make sure that the teeth are engaging with the uh, sprocket holes, and then simply shut the back. So you'll have this uh, film counter back to S for start, wind it on twice, about 180 degrees wind on, and there we go. So it's quite a it's quite a simple little camera. Uh, if you can get one with a working meter, it works really well. If you are looking at getting one, I'd probably go. And if you're going to have more than one lens for it, I'd go for the EX Auto and get around this 
having to change the uh, little ISO setting all the time or ASA setting, whatever you want to call it. But as a little walk around camera with one or two lenses, I wouldn't recommend the 95 or the uh, 125. They're big and they're bulky. But the 35 and the 50 mil are excellent lenses. And this camera is capable of really excellent photos. And the automatic metering system, if it's working on your camera, will give you excellent excellent uh, light metering. It's, it's a great little camera, despite all its weirdness and everything. I think that uh, the board meeting made the right decision in making this. So, uh, all right, well, that's about it. I, not much more I can say about it. I mean, I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something from it. If you have, please like and subscribe. Uh, it costs you nothing and it helps the little channel. And uh, So thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.